Welcome back to another episode. Today we will be talking about SQL, which is one of the most important languages to learn as a software engineer in 2019. If this is your first time on the channel, my name is Zia. I'm a software engineer at Twitter, and I talk about software engineering, tech interviews, and programming in general. Let's jump in. SQL is essentially a collection of data organized in tables, and it is one of the most commonly used and most widely supported technologies in the world. Okay? Most everyone I've seen who's a software engineer knows how to use SQL. It's simple, there's a lot of support for it online, and you have a lot, a lot of intelligent strategies for scaling SQL that, in my opinion, slowly makes NoSQL, the reasoning for using NoSQL, not as strong anymore. In SQL, you have the idea of normalized versus denormalized data. Okay. The idea of normalizing data is that, as we can see earlier, where we had a friend's table, okay, instead of creating new users every single time in the table, we, we had another user's table, and we used the IDs in our friend's table. Okay. So we're essentially normalizing or deduplicating the data in there. Whereas denormalize means that you have a lot of duplicates in the data. And when you update one place, you have to update multiple places as well. Okay, so SQL has this sort of like additional property versus no SQL. For example, we might have a person table, which is it stores information about the person, the name, the country they're from. Okay, and we also have we might have another country table, which has all the countries in the world. So the person has a foreign key into country, and that is what we call by a normalized, uh, normalized data, right? So instead of the person table having a country entry where each one of them is a string, we have an ID in that person table that points to a country row, okay? So it reduces duplication of data. Now, SQL also has asset properties these are essential concepts to grasp and for reasoning why we should use SQL. At a high level, it means that SQL guarantees atomicity. Atomic, atomicity? Yeah. Atomic, well, atomic transactions, basically. So all transactions are all or nothing. So essentially what that means is that when you write a transaction to a SQL, it never gets partially executed. Okay, so for example, in a transaction, you might have a update and you might have a create request, right? You, have, you might have multiple requests in one transaction. It will never be the case where update gets partially executed and then create never gets executed. It's all or nothing. It's either you get both update and create or you get none of it, in which case it will call, it's what we call a rollback. Okay, so it's a guarantee that SQL gives you versus NoSQL, which doesn't give you that guarantee. So in NoSQL, sometimes it's possible that you get partial completion. The next thing is consistency. Okay? What that means is that every valid transaction will update the database state from one valid state to another. It will never be in an unpredictable state. Okay? So it's very consistent. The behavior, I guess, in SQL is very consistent. And the third thing is isolation. Executes, executing a transaction concurrently right, gives you the same results as if the transactions were serial. So each transaction is isolated. It sort of gives you like a view, a snapshot. Okay? You can think of SQL as every time you make a query, it gives you a consistent snapshot. The final thing is durability. Once a transaction is committed, it will remain, it won't disappear miraculously. So using those four points, right, in asset, what you should get from this is the main takeaway is that SQL is very predictable. It's very consistent, okay? Because SQL is consistent and predictable, 
That's why SQL is very, very important and very critical for like financial transaction uh, or financial companies, right? You don't want to have any unpredicted behavior in this case. But at the cost of, right, SQL has a cost to it because it's able to guarantee consistency and predictability, okay? So it has to do some trade-offs in there. At a, at, at, in, well, I'll explain a little bit more, but just to kind of know that, right? When it's able to give you consistency, usually what that means is it's not able to process as much as compared to like NoSQL, okay? 